Welcome, thanks for tuning in. And this time we will do um, a table that's sorted on the server. That's a comment I received a lot of times on my under my tan stack video that um, in some cases it does not make sense to do the sorting filtering all on the client side because you need to load all the server data to your client to do that. And if you have a big table with thousands of rows, this is just um, not feasible to do and um, so this is a table that's completely server side filtered so we can go here say I want all the rock songs I want them by um, Nirvana uh, oh that's track by the artist Nirvana and uh, also in the playlist called music I don't know um, and intro and then sort by artist well that doesn't make sense um, so, um, yeah, every time you can actually see here, this is a request we make. We passed every filter condition or sort condition, um, to the, um, to, to the, to an API that actually then does it in an SQL query here. Um, okay. So here we have a huge where clause. We have uh, order by limit offset so we can also do um, pagination also on the server um, so the offset should change now offset 50 and um, yeah I think this is really, really useful and I hope this helps you so we start off with uh, nothing basically I already added this link on top here to go to a new page but first let's start with the database stuff so going to go to lib server database and first let's create the type for our uh, data that the query returns and we have here playlist track and it has a playlist id playlist name track name artist name and a genre and um, so now we need to write a function that actually lets us query the database. So um, I'm going to paste that. And what we do here is we select um, all the stuff. I also here in the, I just don't return the name also an ID with it um, because um, unfortunately in the date in the table um, there are um, a few uh, duplicate playlist names so it, it's kind of irritating so for example this is the result here this is beekeeper studio SQLite or database viewer and also works with SQLite but um, you can use any DB and here can see music for example is uh, used multiple times as playlist name okay and yeah first limit 50s and just plainly return them and um, what we also need is an so this is an server side rendered table or the data is prepared on the server side so we don't load all the data to the client and then do uh, our filtering on it. So um, we need an API route that can listen to requests like get the f base data or now get page two or now search for that, this and that. So we need an API route. So I'm gonna create a new folder and um, call that um, playlist tracks and in here we have to create a server.ts and going to create a get function and uh, so now for a placeholder we, we will use a uh, query parameters or search parameters in the future but this is just a placeholder for now but we plainly call our database function um, to get any data and in the end we can return it just 
this is also a function svelte kit. So we have our get handler for the server and um, we have our database query function and now the API. And uh, let's, the last part is actually to make the page. So we go to uh, routes and we have, uh, we need a new folder also here, new route, playlist tracks. Um, yes, and here is a plus page dot svelte. And here we do not need any um, server function um, because uh, it's all client side. We only call our API with simple fetches, so we don't need any load uh, uh, server file for this route. And um, I'm going to use 10 stack table again. I actually, this is not necessary. Could use a vanilla table as because we do everything server side, we don't actually depend on much of what it gives, but um, still, I build on it a little bit. So we have our data variable and we have our column definition. So we provide each columns we want to show and um, then we do a, a writable, so with the um, table options for the table, 10 stack table, and we need these models, and then we can create a table instance, and then we can create the HTML structure and uh, yeah, it's just a small header. Then we start off with a table. In the head we loop over each header group as we didn't define any, we don't, we only have the, the single default group and then we loop over each header and um, I'm gonna show a button that's uh, saying if it's sorted and um, um, yeah, so we can click on it later and uh, sort the columns and just show here is the uh, header itself. So the title and um, we loop over each row each table cell and just render the content. So nothing specific. And flex render is not defined. I need to import that. Yeah, okay, so we have an empty table now, but because we still didn't load any data and let's do that. So gonna need to fetch our API endpoint and at the end of the script part, I'm going to do a mount point. So this runs basically if um, the client loaded the page and then we're gonna fetch our API, get the results as a JSON, and then we update our, our state of the table. And now we get our data. So yeah, this is just the basic table and um, yeah, we can actually sort it, but this is now client sorted. So it's only loading the stuff that we actually have loaded. So um, we need now need to actually do the server sorting. And um, so we're going to first go back to our database stuff. And here we can expose um, a type and what we do here we get sort info so when the user clicks on these sort buttons we want to set send um, a request to the server and say okay please now query the data and sort by this um, 
and um, this info is which column and which direction. And this is of the type query playlist. Um, oops. Okay, great. And we can, so this can be null. So it's, there is also the option where we don't sort anything. And um, so I'm going to put a placeholder here and just a small check if there is actually something um, passed. So I need to do a let here if I replace on it. Um, if there is something passed, we replace this part by order by column name, column direction, a uh, sort direction. Otherwise we leave it blank and then we run the statement. Okay, so now here, TypeScript is already saying, yeah, you need to do some stuff here. And um, can then overwrite this stuff. And we, we want also sort call and sort dir from the search parameters. And then we create an object of the type of the function arguments. And if we receive a sort column, we're gonna pass this and we also default to ascending. And here we do pass our arguments. Great. Back at our, our page, we now need to do a lot of stuff. So first, um, we want to do here is what we want to do is we create a new variable sorting that gets is of the type sorting state. So here we save every time we, we change the sorting so we can use it in a function that requests the data. Now I do a small workaround because um, I've got a problem with uh, localhost not working. So I'm going to save the host of um, um, of the website in a variable, more on that later. And um, now I need a function that we can call if we need to refetch the data. So now we, we first do it only on mounting, but if I click here, we need to again refetch the data. So um, first, if we gonna, if this is not populated return, so this can't be called, called uh, until the mounting point. And then we create a URL and um, so this is why we need the workaround. So I want to use the URL uh, syntax here so we, we can um, pass search parameters in an easy way. But unfortunately, if you um, if you use this, you, we need a full URL or if you, you um, then um, convert it to a string that we can actually fetch, then it will pass localhost to it. And in this, uh, I got errors when calling fetch. So um, yeah, I, I save host and I will move uh, remove that again from the URL when calling fetch. And so if we have, if this is not empty, so if we have a sorting defined, we're going to pa uh, set search parameters on this URL object, so column and sort direction. And um, notice I'm going to the index zero, always because uh, the setting will be that you can only sort for one call, not for two calls, columns. And um, so now the workaround stuff. So we we convert the URL to a string and then replace the host with it. Um, so we. Um, get a URL without a relative path URL actually. And then we do the same stuff we did before. We um, actually I don't need that part. 
I guess. Um, oops, what did I do? Um, I think this is uh, actually not needed. Um, and then, yeah, we do the same and update our data. And uh, another thing. Um, we need to do is uh, we create a function called set sorting. And this is uh, the function that will be called when we click on um, on the um, on any column header. Like when we click here, this gets called. And um, okay, this is a code I copied actually from the docs, and I don't understand really why this is needed. But this updater that's passed here can be a function or not. I don't understand, but. Um, we don't need to think about it, I guess, when they do it in the docs. And then we get sorting, we update the table state, and then we call request data. So we, we gonna, this will trigger fetching the new sorted data. Then we need to go to the options, and here we say we add the state that we set here. So we have a sta sorting state. And also on sorting change, we call this set sorting function. And another thing um, we do is we say manual sorting to true. Okay. And actually, when we mount our um, component we don't need to call this we just call request data and let's try it out yeah we actually so I, I saw it by tracks and if we look at the query that's executed so we get sort call track name and we order by track name ascending now if I sort descending we execute the seri descending and we still only fetch 50 rows. So this is how we do sorting on the server. So next we're gonna do pagination. So we only return 50 rows for now, but uh, you may want to look at the next 50 rows. So we need pagination and um, to make this uh, more um, convenient I add another column to the query we just get um, get the um, current row ID so first row in the database is after sorting is one and so on and by pagination we if we go to the next page we still get a, a rolling number for that and also um, because of our pagination change, we need to change what we return instead of just plainly returning the data. We also need to return a count of rows. So we actually um, know um, what the last page is. So create a new type, playlist track response. And in here, um, we say we want to return that type. And of course, this is now saying I don't liking it. So let's say um, rows is this as this and don't return that. Uh, later return rows, an object of rows and we need the count. So how do we get the count? Uh, or first um, we need to actually, uh, I said I added the row number, so we just add this part here, the window function row number over nothing, just returns for the first row one and so on. And um, as a parameter we need to know which page we want to grab, so um, we get a page and also page size. And so instead of saying uh, limit 50 here, we also do placeholder 
and um, yeah, so we need to set it here. Um, but first, let's look at the count. How can we do the count stuff? Um, so um, SQL has a count function and uh, it's really good to use. So I can just do select uh, count count anything or star from and do a subquery and I get the row count. Thing is we do a limit here. So we, we only want page one or page two. And of course then we um, only get the rows that we limit. But um, we want to get the data limited and but all the rows. Um, all the count of the rows. So what we do here is we need to actually build two SQL statements, one with the limit part and one without. So um, the first one is the one with the limit. Um, let's do it down here. Called with pagination and we return a uh, we. we Replace the placeholder with a limit and offset. And uh, we also do one without for the count and we just leave it empty. Then we prepare on the part with pagination. And we also do another query where we select count from the subquery without a pagination. Prepare and execute and we can then uh, count count rest.count. So now we return both the rows and an info about how many rows we have. And if we add search parameters here like um, filters, of course uh, we get then get um, the amount of um, row counts um, for the filters applied. So if I search, for example, here for a specific artist, the count will respect that um, that uh, where clause then. So now we need to again update the um, the API function. So we get search parameters again, page and page size. I default to minus one if this is empty. And then I throw an error if this is empty or um, smaller one also including that minus one. And here we don't leave that empty. We need pagination all the time. so. We pass that here. Great. Now we can go to our um, component and we start off. So we need three variables. First one is the current page. Second one is how many maximum pages we do have. And then the page size, the default one. And in our request data function, we need to set the search parameters, page size and uh, page and page size. So we can use them in the API. And here we now don't only get the rows, but we get um, also the row count. So let's use TypeScript for that. And we just say data equals rest dot rows. And max pages is math seal. So we round to the next number. Um, and we divide the amount of rows returned to uh, by the page size. Great. Um, after the set sorting function, we need another function called set pagination. And now we need some controls to so that the users can actually change pages. So below the table, 
I create a div and here are four buttons to one go to the first page one to go to the previous page we show the current page next page and last page and every time in here I call this set pagination function and um, also have disabled checks great so now here you can see um, currently in page one can go to page two go check what's executed in our thing so now it's a little bit uh, confusing because we do two queries but we have the count here here we don't have any limit and here is the actual um, query that's executed and here we say limit 25 offset 25 so page 3 should be offset 50 here offset 50 you can also go to the last page 349 here we have a pretty high offset I guess yeah and yeah I think it's it's blazing fast actually so um, we do everything server side and of course we also can do sort and then paginate. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I will cut this into two parts because the video got so long. So in the next part we will add a global filter and also a column filters. So can, I don't know, alternative. Uh, we can filter anything and also combined um, also of course on the server. So stay tuned for the next part.